Well, so they've kind of, because of that MF, they really have put a, a wrench in the gears, but it is going to be Zyra <laughs> locked in, and, and now we get to see, is it just going to be MF locked right Oh my end? god, he did it! Oh my god. <laughs> I think the reason for SKT's big band right now is like they feel like they've learned something significant from the last game yeah. from the Zyra. They're willing to go up it against uh, again, but with Caitlyn this time. So maybe it was the AD carry mismatch too. So yeah, I, I think at least they're willing to tailor their gameplay just a little bit. Yeah, I think Caitlyn actually changes this up a lot. I think that Ezreal was a lot weaker into this uh, than the Caitlyn is. And I mean, the fact of the matter is, the follow-up CC that you have makes it very scary for the MF. If you can actually land a Zyra root on the MF, follow that up with a Caitlyn trap, this is going to be a squishy support. That guy can just straight up die. So, you know, he does have the poke. You do have that ability to kind of zone out the Zyra, uh, but you are going to be very susceptible to kind of getting that poke traded back on you. And I, I think that Caitlyn should match up better against the Ash and, and the MF here. And also their last pick is Neko here. I think it also does well into every one of Rox's champions right now. I think it does well into its own matchup as well as like all the immobile champion. Or, I mean, I was talking about it earlier, but you know, my go-to against Zyra is Brand. And he's t telling me something new. <laughs> Maybe this is the way of the future. <laughs> yeah, I think a lot of people are, are going to be at least giving it a shot, try it out, and see see how it goes. Uh, you got to imagine the solo queue is going to be... Preferably not in my game. <laughs> yeah. Any other game, it should be fine. <laughs> yeah, maybe in your game on the other team, but... Uh... <laughs> oh, yeah, for sure. But then I hope I'm not playing Zara. <laughs> yeah. Oh, we see a lot of fighting. Like, this has happened every game so far. Both bot duos will just come here and fight for vision so they don't get cheesed in the level one. I mean, Wolf lost his flash in the last game, so holds on to it there. Playing a little safer there, back toward his lane. Kirillo actually going back, interestingly. Or maybe just, yep, seeing the animation. It is a good one. Just having fun, really. <laughs> There's nothing, nothing to do in the level one here. Yep. Caitlyn not getting poked either. Be off to the side, bang and pray. We're kind of looking at each other, but pretty normal as far as the level one goes. Plant spawned up by Zyra. And be curious to see kind of what the Duelings want to do here as the waves first meet. Yeah, it's kind of an advantage for Zyra to, for this to happen because, you know, you see her just spawning her plants. She's going to be able to, oh, unless all of them die here. Yeah, she has at least a small advantage. Like, she can help use the plants to push the lane and get, like, a level two advantage. And some damage going out too. Yeah, it's going to be nice. So uh, in this matchup, are you going to be favoring Zyra Caitlyn then? Because because of that AD carry change, or you still think that the MF should have enough of an advantage to actually kind of put it in their favor? Um, how I like to see it is just in these delicate like range versus range matchups, the most important HP is actually on the range champion or like the support champion. Um, we'll just have to see like how much damage, you know, Prey and you know Prey and Bank can like exert on the opposing support actually. You know, it's actually pretty interesting as well with just the, the love tap passive and stuff from MF. Her autos are actually pretty impactful, even just that one auto trade. You can see he's prepping autos on minions, kind of remove that debuff, put it on something else, and then he does get those autos off on bang uh, whenever that, that debuff is ready. He's, he's just going to go through E, one auto. So it's a nice little trading pattern there too. Yeah, and like I said earlier, I think most of their damage should actually be like focused on Zyra because if Zyra's too low to like, contest the brush vision, it's actually, the lane gets really swung. Um, like at this timing, I think they're trading too much damage on Prey because, or, or Bang rather, because Bang has some sustain in his Doran and his like uh, Warlords. So yeah. I think it's just like they have to focus their targets a little bit better. Yeah. There's a lot of lifesteal and kind of sustain from Mastery's 480s in general now. Mm -hmm. You have not only Warlords and your Dorans, but you also have a Feast that get, you give the 30 HP back every like 30 seconds from minions. You also have the just percentage lifesteal talent. So I do definitely agree. I think that focusing that harass on Zyra would make more sense. And, and Prey is kind of taking more of that poke so far. Yeah. Oh, they're doing it right here. Yeah, yeah they're just... trying. That they are both supports. Honestly, like when you play these range supports, they always go all offense in their rune pages and masteries. There's like not even a little bit of defense. So just using your spells do more damage on them as well. <laughs> you can see a lot of consumables actually move through. Wolf is out of biscuits, but there's still some there for gorillas. So maybe winning the poke war, but looks like the push is kind of in favor of SKT right now. They did actually early on get the level two, but didn't convert into too much else. And you can kind of see the play pattern for this land. We've even got like extra plant auto attacks to try and clear them out fast because you do have two AD carries. Like, it's really interesting to watch this lane 2v2. Yeah, and as, like it seems like SKT already learned from this. Their yeah. early game's going pretty well. Wolf's at, like, 
just like I say it, he takes some damage, but... Uh, yeah, he actually took like 40% of his health there, so th yeah. that's like a pretty significant amount, and since he doesn't have potions, uh, the next the next couple trades are going to be pretty important. Yeah, he's going to have to go home if he gets like the, the same pattern. I, I think MFE's up, he's going to take some damage. Yeah, I think uh, he's playing it fairly well for the most part, but... Uh, at least they have control of the lane for SKT right now. Yeah, I, I will say, I like it a lot more when Prey actually saves his volley to use on the Zyra. So, like, when they when you throw down the MF, uh, make it rain, you throw down the slow, then that should be, like, a super free volley that you can actually go up and land there. So, to me, that's more what he should be aiming for. But Prey has been kind of more trading uh, with Bang using his volley and trying to use it on the minions and stuff. But especially when Wolf has so little sustain left, you know, he doesn't really have anything left. If you hit one more volley, the guy just has to leave, and it looks like... He's gonna have to leave right now, but yeah. he's gonna get to leave for free though. As yeah, he's gonna in. come back, and Rox won't get too much of like a footing on this lane. So overall, uh, Wolf just sacrificed his health for like laying positioning, and then now he's gonna get back like at a good time too. Picks up the early Frostfang, so he's gonna be pretty rich. <laughs> I love it. You can see Bang. He's going to do what he can here. They're going to try and push the lane back out. Great damage, actually, just from the Make It Rain Love Tap. But Fox not going to take this opportunity. We'll back together. And this is something we talk about in a lot of different lanes, but I feel like maybe is most critical in bottom lane, your back timings. Because, you know, two people can push out the wave. You want to make sure it's in a good spot. And, of course, you want to never be too far behind the other guy as far as itemization goes. Mm -hmm. Yeah, ideally, um, like the best situation is just to have two people. Oh, Wolf's here. They could try to look for something. Might if he can hit a root actually. on Kuro. Ooh. Bit of a bait. No, from coming. Baker. Yeah, Peanut gonna eat it. That's a Gets lot of out damage. Though. Yeah, that's a good little trade in. I mean, the, the fact is, getting him low now kind of gives your lanes a little bit more freedom to play with. You know that their jungler has been chunked out. He can clear the pink board. And, and, and although it is a bot lane stream, you still have to track how the other lanes are doing. And Rox kind of had to make that move uh, to try to help Kuro uh, out a little bit because Kuro was actually getting quite far behind uh, to Faker in the mid lane and it has now evened out as a result of Faker backing off and, and then being able to kind of push it in. Yeah, this is like kind of, like you said, Kuro's laning hasn't been super great the last few games. Uh, when you're playing like a TP or TP list mid laner like Victor, uh, Pushing out the wave and getting the opportunity to go home is really big. So yep. it's definitely good for Rox to help him with that. Yeah, he's going to need to upgrade his X core. So he actually got that threshold. So he is going to be pretty happy about that. And he was down like 12 CS before they actually kind of pushed Faker back. So uh, he gets a good base off. But back here in the bot lane, it's going to be a big wave uh, pushing into SKT that they can start to collect. And already Gorilla has, has eaten quite a bit of hope there. Uh, I think um, the most important thing now for the Rox duo, they're going to just get their ults together, or hopefully like mm -hmm. around the same time, they're just going to use it on one target. I think that's a guaranteed kill. It, it does, like, Emma probably does like 800 damage with her full combo, maybe a little less, but yeah, I think that uh, the threat right now is just hitting level 6 and just casting your spells. And it feels like that's what happened a lot in the last game, so curious to see if SKT can learn from that and maybe change some of their positioning and keep those summoners up, make sure they don't get tagged by an arrow. The Prey is very good at aiming. I will say that much. Yeah. And, and to me, it kind of feels like when it's, it's that sort of situation, SKT needs to kind of get them in this disadvantageous health health point, basically. Like, they have to chunk them out before they can get six and do the all-in, right? Because yeah. if you're very low and you go for that all-in, on the other person can kind of trade back and, and maybe kill you off. So yeah. uh, we'll have to see if that's going to happen. But Peanut sneaking around here in the bot lane and... Ooh, oh, they double as well. They are going to go with oh, Gorilla. Gone. Flashes forward. Wolf going to get ignited, and that's first blood again. Pina, kick oh. Bang back in. Absolutely massive play, and Gorilla will just stay alive. Wow, that, that's exactly what I was talking about. They just use their level sixes together. Gorilla flash in. Oh, no, it feels bad. Protect oh, him. He's going to get... Yep. Oh, ulti, shield. Yep, see you later. Pina <laughs> gets an easy kill. But Pina he's... doesn't follow that. Is he going to die? No way. No. Okay. He's going to live, but, but I don't even really know. Okay, he is going to be able to come back and pick up the farm. I was going to say, if he lost all that farm, it wouldn't have been super worth it. But yeah, right off that level up, instantly throws in the ult. So they had actually called Peanut down before Ash was level 6, so that he was in position. Right as he levels up, he skills his ultimate, hits that there, and they're able to go aggressively in for it. Peanut landing it, the kick flash in. Uh, very nicely done by Rox. And, and obviously very aware of kind of those power spikes that they have to hit, like you were talking about, waiting for the level 6. They didn't even need it on MF. Wonderful target selection, great execution on the play. This is kind of, I think, what we were missing last game when we were looking at mid lane. So it's great to see it back in action again. And, you know, Prey up about 10 CS, Bang is doing just fine, but his Ash is amazing. If they can continue this pattern, Gorilla Roman. Yeah, 
Also, the, the more I look at it, like, I can see exactly why MF is a great counter to Zyra. Mm -hmm. When Zyra moves up just to cast her spells, it's kind of slow. Like, just casting the E right away and just moving out of the way to not get hit by the Zyra spells, it, it seems pretty easy to do. And, he, like, Gorilla's just doing it over and over and getting Wolf Low sets up that kill. So I, I think they're actually really well rehearsed with this bottom duo. You have a pretty significant range advantage. Like, make it rain, you can actually throw that down from quite far away. Uh, and Peanut, once again, back to the bot lane here. They're just going to be looking for the return gank because they know that Summoners are down on Wolf. If you catch him with an arrow, he's basically 100% dead. So uh, Wolf is going to have to play very, very carefully. Oh, no. Oh. There it is. Did it again. Stun lands through. He's oh, up. he's out. He's actually going to die just on his own now. Gorilla <laughs> gets it. This is amazing. This, this bot duo is so hilarious to watch, honestly. They just cast their spells together. And it's just like a guaranteed kill every time. It's, it's obviously very different, but it kind of reminds you in a way of how people used to play old Graves Leona lane yeah. and stuff like that. Um, obviously, that's a long time ago, but that's that's kind of what it reminds me of, where you just play that lane to hit six, and you'd have almost guaranteed kill if you execute your all-in properly, and this feels very much like that, at least against the Zyra. Yeah, it, it almost seems like it's super safe to use, because if you miss the arrow, it's like, okay, let's try again next time, but yeah. if you hit it, it's just a free kill. <laughs> Yeah, exactly. I mean, Peanut's paying attention down here as well, but he didn't need to be there for the last one. He didn't know that, so it's good that he's there anyway. But we maybe expect the other lanes to suffer. Smeb doing just fine 1v1. Kuro behind, but it's not too bad. SKT, they're going to try and collapse here for this Cloud Drake. Looks like Rox won't be in position to contest for it, so I like this move a lot. No vision there for Rox means that that should be a Drake given over, but Rox have picked up so many Infernals this series already, they're probably happy to give away this Drake. Yeah, I mean, you're never happy no, about I it, but, no. but, but I will say that it's it's okay. Oh, feels bad. Oh, he stole it too, and then he's going to get That's the kill. That's really gross. Oh, that is actually quite nice uh, there for Faker, because having a CS disadvantage is one thing, but when you start giving someone who's ahead of you in farm and XP, also giving him kills and an extra gold in, in that kind of way, that's when you can really start to snowball and, and take over. So uh, Kuro's going to have to be careful. Yeah, that was well executed on SKT's part. Oh, shit. I was scared for him right yeah. But uh, I think Peanut, just the series too, he has been playing pretty carelessly. Yeah. Um, I mean, if he saw the ball right away, I, I, I'd assume he figured like, okay, there's more than one person missing too. Um, I think yeah. he was just greeting for the Wraith, honestly. Yeah, he wanted I, mean, I think he could have just ward hopped out, yeah. but he wanted to get the Wraith and, and he loses both the Wraith and his life. Not worth it. Yeah, I think also maybe his team for like, maybe the comms were not clear on who's like, who could be there. Uh, I'm sure if he knew like two people could be right on me, he would definitely just jump out and just seize one. And yep. try, I like it like from SKT because you can tell the Brooks are trying it again. They've got their ultimates back and ready, but Wolf does have his flash back. Couldn't flash the first arrow, didn't have it in the second one. The fact of the matter is, even if you shoot out the arrow as prey and he flashes it, you're still super happy about that. That's a much shorter cooldown. Especially because Ash is likely going to build into CDR, uh, I would assume. You know, he has the long swords are probably going to be building into Essence Reaver and that kind of CDR build. And you have a lot of Ash arrows up, you can keep trading them. And anytime you're able to get a long summoner for that, it's going to feel good. Yeah, and also for SKT, there's there it is. Yeah, there oh, it going is. again. Ulti oh, follows through. Not enough damage this time, but yeah. Bang does commit his own summoner this time. It's a heal. I guess they can't kill him from full, so. That's well, Prey, sad. Prey also didn't even auto him once, yeah. so. I, I think that had Prey been further forward, they might have been able to, but even just pushing him out, look at all the damage they're going to get on this turret now, and you know, and if their jungler was around, they could easily threaten the dive, really so it. they have so much pressure because of it. Yeah, I think <laughs> this is as big as a counter pick we've seen so far. Like, really, I don't see what SKT can really do against this pairing. Like, the Zyra can't get in range to do anything, the Caitlyn is like just sitting there farming, nothing to do because the range is too long from MF. To me, the thing you can do is you can bring down your jungler. Like, yeah. Olaf, I think, can run these guys down pretty well. And uh, especially when they're pushing to your turret like this nonstop, I think that getting some help from your jungler is kind of kind of what you need, right? Yeah. Um, and, and that just hasn't happened in this game. If you leave it in the isolated 2v2, it's going to be really bad. And, and losing that turret now is, is so bad for SKT because it unlocks these guys to move around the map and kind of do this to other people. A major point is just like the first Ash arrow we saw with Pina coming down, mm -hmm. like they executed on that play first. Maybe if like uh, the Olaf was there much earlier than Peanut, they could have done something. But yeah, yeah. it's gotten to the point where the, you know you can't really help them, and they already lost their turret, so nothing yeah. much, nothing much for uh, Blank to do. Ooh, Wolf's gonna get faced at Kuro. That's gonna force a flash, and I feel like Wolf knows he's gonna die the next time he sees Prey and Gorilla. 
with yeah. that summoner down. Also of note, they did go back and buy. They kind of stayed for a while committing for that tower. They gave them a nice bit of extra gold. So Swifty's done the Gorilla, and Essence Reaver completes it for Prey, who has tier two boots up already. I think that that flash he just had to use was really like a like slip in focus because uh, like a common Zyra trick is obviously just to W the brush before oh, you Ash check Oh, Arrow. Yeah, he was definitely dead if that hit, actually. Peanut wants it. Kicks in again. Enough damage. Oh, it's oh, barely not enough. Soft. Very nice from Faker with the shield there as well. Yeah, Wolf. Just wow. 32 <laughs> HP he lives on. I, I can't imagine being Wolf right now, actually. I, I would be tilted from this play phase, <laughs> so maybe it's really affecting his play, just how the game is going. You, you kind of have to think so, because the fact of the matter is, Ashal from full vision, he wasn't even slowed, and he's been hit by like every single Ashal, right? The last one where he got ulted into the turret and didn't flash that, yeah. these are things where you would expect a player to be able to reactively flash that relatively easily. Um, and, and he's not being able to sidestep, he's putting himself in bad positions, and he's not kind of like being able to respond in a good way. Uh, but I will say that trade right there, at least, uh, is pretty decent for SKT because Peanut did have flash. Yeah. They're going to try to run down top. And they're doing what he can. He's going to get chased down, though. And that like seems like not a good time. Freebie there for Duke. Nice little gank there from Blank. So, again, not going bottom line. Definitely trying to affect the other stages. Wolf also roaming. So I like that he, he kind of knows that the lane is not a safe place. He's going to try to go somewhere else. Blue Buff here donated to Kuro, though. I do think it's really smart uh, to try to help out the Echo because he was struggling a bit. And if Duke can get to the point where he is kind of like outpacing the damage of his opponent, you can run down Rumble very easily. And uh, he can really start to struggle in those lanes when you have Merc Treads and Spear Visage and, you know, like Iceborne and so on and so forth. You can just chase him down forever. So it can become pretty tough. Uh, but now it kind of seems like because bot lane turret is down, the supports are rolling. Ooh. Oh, that's a good flash. That's the kind of flash Wolf should be doing. <laughs> but yeah. Just do what Faker does. Just copy easy. him. <laughs> yeah, yeah, easy. A lot of people do, right? Like, yeah, yeah, exactly. Ooh, TP play. If they're looking for. Oh, there that it's looks, That looks grim. You are very overextended. Does flash. Equalizer's still small. Gorilla gonna line it up. Flash forward. Ignite. Oh, Auto. Wait. Make it rain. Oh, see, oh my god, Gorilla's a feed. <laughs> Just watching that just makes me... <laughs> I had to laugh. That's just too funny. All right, so that's great timing for our Twitter question there. Brainless Monkey asks, assuming Ash MF keeps showing up, what support can best, pun best punish her? Kent, Braum, what are we thinking? Well, um, I think this Karma would do fine. Just like another non-Zyra support. This is a counter pick in my opinion. Yeah, exactly. And I think it's... Oh, that feels bad. With, but it, it's one of those things where it's probably only going to show up if you pick Zyra, yep. right? So it's not just going to be a blind pick uh, support MF because I think there's a lot of things that could smash this lane. Uh, so so it is one of those things where we're probably only going to see it show up if your opponents pick it first. But like well, Kate said, I think there's a lot of stuff that it probably could. This is what I think. For Zyra, she does the same thing MF does, but slower. But if you pick like a different stylistic support, like I said, Karma, she can poke just as well. She can control the brush. She can set up ganks. Basically does all the things MF cannot do. So I, I think this pairing is particularly strong too. That's we're going to see him. Back. Yeah, I like this again a lot from Wolf leaving the lane. Azara does have a good amount of CC. You can see it there with the E, with the ultimate kind of committing in. Gorilla's trying to roam around and help. Nice ulti. Oh. Is this one more kill? Yeah. Wolf, he can see it again. Yeah. Peanut's just going to kick him. He's dead. That is hilarious. Didn't even ulti. And now Ragnarok pop. Blank could be dead here as well. Peanut. He's his ult here. Looking for something. Who does he want? Good block there from Duke. But now the Warthop's going to come in. Kicked in the face. Slowed down by Prey. And the auto's going to keep coming in. Damage is good. Gorilla looking for it. But Peanut gets himself another kill. This <laughs> Roxas bot dude is actually just running rampant on the game. Like, I don't know. It seems like it's definitely an issue. Just like this Ash. Ash MF pairing. One thing, one thing at least that's going a bit better for them than last game though, is at least the Kalen has relevant farm, right? Yeah. Uh, last game, Ezreal was massively behind in farm and kills. Uh, so this way he is at least somewhat relevant. And I think that Wolf is kind of in this tough position because once they're this far behind in lane and his first counter pick and blah, 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 you can't lane anymore. So he has to roam and they have done a good job of at least moving around the map and trying some stuff. Uh, but, you know, he's going to get punished on the exit. That's just also just a Prey clean arrow. Prey is so good. <laughs> yeah, that's just a clean arrow. And I think this, I don't know, this whole play just seems a little strange. They're just a little too deep without too much knowledge of the enemy bot kill. Again, all pretty straightforward here. He took his time with that one too. Made sure he lined it up. <laughs> 
So I'm going to get red buffs. So he's getting a little better, but Hurricane plus the BF sword means that Bang's kind of in that trough where he just wants to farm up and get two, maybe three items. And he'll be kind of a, allowed to accelerate that a bit with the rune and Hurricane. But Rock Spikes are just starting to put pressure on these turrets. And now Midout is getting heavily threatened by uh, two AD carries. Yeah, they're just getting free hits. Um, also, they have the Ocean Drag, so they can keep this up for a while. I think they're just trying to... Uh, they don't have too much to do on the map right now, so they're just grouping together. Yeah, Bro, hero comes out. Oh, hit oh, him no. again. Yeah. Bang gets hit that time. Wow. Prey is just Prey is honestly... actually a base. Yeah, he's, he's carrying this game, like walking around. He's hit so many arrows in a row. And he's been involved in almost everything. 204, he's only missed out on the one kill. A uh, gorilla has actually been involved in everything. So this has been such a bot lane centric game for Rocks, and they're really doing a fantastic job. Yeah, that's why it's sad. I think it cast about the bot lane the last game. So much action happened where you're just watching Victor versus Karma. <laughs> <laughs> well, you got your wish this game gate because yeah. it's been the show put on once again. And I think you guys mentioned Will's mentality. You know, maybe just feeling the struggle, feeling like. You know, it's so frustrating. I get it in like you one game, you kind of lose a freak game versus, you know, a weird counter pick and you're like, okay, like I got smashed, but like I'm, I can beat it. Let's do it again. He has to be so tilted now. Yeah. Like losing two convincing lanes in a row at least, maybe not a game just yet. Like, whoops, he's mentally got to be a little done here. It, yeah. it's, it's definitely tough, but I honestly think that they were doing fine and they could have perhaps been able to uh, farm that lane out and been okay. But Rox just executed on the first kill so well. You know, you had talked about it a little bit already, Gabe, but just the fact that instant Ash Arrow level six, Peanut's already there with level six. Uh, not only do they kill one, they kill two and they get summoners. So that really started the snowball and allowed them to continue it up. So I think that SKT was probably right that they could have played it well enough that it might have been okay. Um, but Rox just kind of like outplayed them. They played it better, they were smarter, they were prepared. And as a result, they were able to start that snowball. And once they were ahead and had a good matchup, it's it's pretty tough. I think the key here is actually the Ash. Like, mm -hmm. I know they took Ash first pick, but that should really just say how like how important it is to get this Ash for your duo, as well as like you can imagine if the uh, if you just swapped ADCs, the Ash could set up on the MF really easily as well. So, just like I think recognizing certain picks, you know, SKT played. Uh, Ash the other game too, right? So yep. I think they know how strong Ash is and we'll, we'll probably see a higher priority on it in the next game. And of all the players to get Ash, Prey is like unbelievably good at the champ. He might be the world's best Ash. As Smeb sneaks away, Flash Scrap Shield gets, in, gets his way out. And we do have a question actually from Devin Schaefer who asks, why did Prey buy a Cull instead of getting another Longsword? It's a very common bottom line question. We see Cull second quite a lot gate inside uh i think it's much better than getting longsword usually yeah. just because uh one one of the benefits is a sustain against a lot of the like heavy poke lanes we see two it just lets you buy your gets your two item much faster bang i don't think this is a kill <laughs> yeah no that one's a little tricky <laughs> they're getting too ambitious uh well i mean i guess they just shot out the arrow and see what it, it would get but i also think they were trying to they were trying to hopefully hit faker right yeah, if yeah. you hit faker with that all uh, then I, that could be a Maybe kill. kill yeah. So so I think it's, it's still worth a try, especially because he already has his 30% CDR, right? Yeah. Like, this is not a big deal to use a rank 2 Ash ultimate. Look at it. It's almost half halfway done, the yeah. cooldown. Yeah. It's just funny to see the MF, like, all layered on. Yeah. It's like, oh, maybe I got him. <laughs> yeah, no, not quite enough there. And I guess just to finish the conversation on Carl, obviously Longsword, maybe not as valuable. What about versus second Dorans is the other thing people might consider. Uh, well, basically... Call, call is an investment in, in the later game, okay. right? It does it does have a bit of that sustain that you talked about, but if you just want pure laning power, you would go Dorn. Okay. So Longsword is like, you want power now. It's, it's, it's the mid -ground, It's higher almost. fighting power, basically, and it's it's building into something, whereas Dorn's is full committal to kind of like early. Like, the Longsword is a component, right? So you can be building it into something mm -hmm. later. It's going to be useful. Whereas Call is... is a little bit of kind of in the middle, you get some sustain, okay. but you're also going to cash in on the gold later. So it's just an investment in the, in the later game. And I, I personally think that call is undervalued a lot of the time, uh, especially in pro play, because pro play is often very, very passive. And if you're just going to buy a long sword and then farm your lane for 20 minutes, then that long sword was, was pretty worthless and it could have been uh, a call which would have netted you an advantage later. Yeah, I think the biggest argument for it is like uh, some ADCs are strong on one item. A good example is like Jin, who goes yep. to armor pin build. Uh, for that champion, I would, I would rather get the long sword and then build that into my field boost faster than finishing my call. Blink again, sure. but for these kind of AD carries, for an Ash, for a, a Caitlyn, hey, yeah. more okay. Ooh, oh, hello, God. big damage, turning it around. Smed gonna get in there as Kuro blows up four defenseless Wolf Peanut. 
gonna tag up Blank as well. SKT, I feel like they're starting to get a little restless. I mean, Wolf is is like yeah, he's almost. <laughs> I don't even know what he's ha what he's doing. I, I mean, he, he's straight up whiffing his arrow. He's not even landing damage from it. The last two times he used it, it, it just feels like it's way too aggressive. You flashing in as a Zyra into the whole team, like what was he gonna accomplish there? Yeah, it feels like it should be a little calculated. Obviously, you know, he missed it. It looks really bad on him, but it didn't seem like a good chance to use his flash E, anyways. Yeah. Oh. The, the, re the reward was too low for the risk. Yeah. Ooh, Peanut again in the backline found Bang, but that's again so aggressive. And I'm going to say it too aggressive again from Peanut. Yeah, Peanut just does what he wants in this yep. series. It seems like maybe they let, let him lose from the caller, you know. It's like, you do you, Peanut, and we'll just follow up. But yeah, there he definitely went too, too hard. Bang going to farm it up again. Keeping the CS pretty nice, we actually should check in there because we've seen a lot of action, mainly from the supports roaming around. But even there, as far as the AD carries going, let's actually talk about their itemization a bit. Kind of expected builds that don't change oh. too much. Baker gets aggressive oh, and doesn't all. get the all in. Should be all first. Thing. Yeah, yeah, you need, you need to all W, and he W then ulted, so that global oh. actually missed it. That ult hit Faker as well. That's amazing play from Prey. He's gonna look to someone down, he flashes in, he knows he can get Wolf, he does take it down. Duke is here, dives in onto Gorilla and gets it, but Prey gonna turn around the damage meds here as well. Wow. Harpoon lands, Chrono shift away, Prey still has to keep cutting, oh, but Duke gets the so shot well down. Well done. And there's the Rumble ulti committed as well. Got slowed, Harpoon barely gonna miss, but Kuro flashes in with the Rylos to secure it, and that's gonna be one for Victor. Duke actually saved that team fight so hard. Uh, I think a lot of players would have simply just ulted back out of the fight, but he waited for a shadow to come up, land on Prey, and he picks up both kills there, so that was really well done. Even forcing out Victor's flash to get the kill on him was super worthwhile, but uh, once again, I mean, Wolf kind of getting caught out. He's far up. He doesn't have his flash from the previous play, so he gets taken down, but uh, there's been a lot of mistakes in this game, certainly. Like, Faker should have got a kill almost for free under the turret, so Flash, that's he, he W'd first and then tried to ulti. If he ulted first, I think he actually gets that kill, and this whole fight can look pretty different, but then... MF arrow comes out, MF arrow combo comes out and able to get a lot of damage on Baker and then Wolf is, is just kinda up in the front trying to save his team because now. And like we said, <laughs> Duke's like the savior of this game for so far. Look at the patience. Yeah, right there. Oh. Just enough mana to use the Q too. Kinda lucky actually. <laughs> yeah. All calculated. He would have gotten out too, because he had Merc treads, but yeah, the Victor flashed on him. Uh, yeah, this whole game, I think they have to put all their eggs on Duke right now because the spot duo can't do too much. And actually, Duke's just his kid is pretty good against the uh, champions on rocks. I will say, though, Faker, Faker is still really strong, right? Like, Faker is, is getting to the point where he is going to become pretty impactful. I'm uh, looking for another arrow. Ooh, this one is going to miss. But, I mean, Caitlyn is obviously very behind. Uh, does have farm. It is going to become relevant. You know, when she finishes her third item, that's when she's going to become pretty scary. It's kind of the same thing for Orianna. Um, so these guys are going to be kind of waiting for those those three items, and if Faker is able to finish his death cap reasonably soon, and then Bank can finish his rapid fire, I think they're going to be in a spot where they are going to be uh, very very scary. And they're only down 2,000 gold. The dragons aren't super impactful, so it's it's just going to come down to play and and avoiding those ash pickoffs. Yeah, if the carries can get damage off, I think SKT's comp looks pretty good. But actually, yep. I also think like rocks they have. So many like carry zoning tools like MF all, Ash Arrow, Victor all, Rumble all, all those things to stop sure. like Ori and Kaelin from doing damage. So it's actually, I feel like the game, um, <laughs> Duke has to do most of the heavy lifting for this one. Cool. Yeah. So it looks like we have a bit of a siege built up here in mid lane, just some way for the back and forth as Rox try and protect that mid out for as long as possible. Chris Lewis, though, does have a question out in the Twitterverse. Is Rox bot lane an adaptation to their first game loss, or is a hidden pick? Safe for SKT in semis. It feels pretty prepared. <laughs> I think it's almost guaranteed a hidden pick, something yeah. that they had been preparing. I don't think that you just randomly bring that out uh, in the semis without having practiced that. But. Yeah, it looks really well rehearsed too. Yeah. yeah. And oh, that was sick. Oh, Baker down. could be in trouble. Damage is there, and that's such a good pick off. I cannot stress this enough. Bray's <laughs> Ash is amazing. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, and, and they can get chased down. They're Pina. actually like oh. cut off from their base, so rocks can push mid, and they kind of have the inside edge here. Exactly what they're going to do. At least get this turret. Ooh, Kuro chasing down Duke could be dangerous. Kuro's like, yep, don't really fancy my 1v1. Gonna rejoin my team, and Rock's actually gonna go Baron instead. They call the audible away from that mid tier too. I'm gonna try and take down this buff. Faker up 20 seconds, Blank's still alive. Uh, this should be good for Rockstar for the most part. It's hard for Olaf to get into the pit, and they have all five up. They should at least be able to 
Oh, they might try to burn it, actually. Uh, got the damage. Oh, he does have Zara ult and stuff. Too, oh, Blank so. runs in here. Agnorox, he knows he got the skill, but he's just getting it blown up. Beautiful play from the Rocks Tiger, securing yet another Baron. Yeah, for Olaf, it's so hard to get those Baron steals because it's so predictable how he's going to do it. Uh, I think um, it's hard to say, like, if he should have gone in, like, a little later or something, but maybe he didn't have the information to do that. Yeah. I mean, you don't have Flash, so you can't go over the wall. You don't have a Gap Closer. There's, like, no dash. You just have to run straight through everyone, but... Ooh, another you lose your resist, up. too, and you just run in, right? So yeah. It's hard for him. Kyle's starting to fall left, right, and center. Now 4-2 up in turret for the Rock Tigers, and... The bot lane duo has kind of just snowballed the rest of the map out of control. Rocks again taking over and Prezash setting up for pick after pick after pick. Rocks, they're great as a macro team. They know where they want to be on the map and Prey just setting it all up for them. Yeah, I mean, the, the Ash Arrow on the Baker gets them that kill and, and that's what allows them to take the Baron and, and really that's what they needed to kind of blow this game open. Last outers, and uh, if they can pick up top and bot, that's a lot more gold going into their pockets, and they can continue to kind of push this forward. And they will have to be a bit careful, though, of like TP flanks from Duke and stuff, because if you do get flanked by Duke and Blank, and Faker kind of somehow get a shockwave off you know, with the ball delivery systems and stuff, that, that can be scary. But I do think that they're in a fantastic position to kind of push in here and extend their lead. Yeah. Also, they've just been so like patient with the game. They're only going on good Ash arrows, yeah. which makes like the game pretty fail safe too. Like, there's not much risk in what they're doing. And also, um, I think now since they have the Baron buff, they can actually just pull the trigger and one of the towers just go for a dive if the uh, arrow hits well. I also think that Prey's build is quite intelligent. Cool. <laughs> nice arrow. <laughs> That's an ulti. He's so scared, actually. I don't think he was in too much trouble. Yeah, it's, it's probably just a little bit of nerves there, getting a little bit scared as you said from that but the maw i think is quite smart because it's like when you look at this game it's like okay well how, how does skt win well it's probably duke diving in on the ash and getting a shockwave off you know like that kind of a big play where you just one round is ash who's really strong and building the maw he doesn't actually need like an ie he doesn't need to be this godlike auto attacker he just needs to keep fishing for arrows and stay alive and i think that this build is really intelligent because Ooh, of that. Oh, break great ult from faker <laughs> as awesome. you say <laughs> can't save you from anything <laughs> i mean damage is there they're trying to do a painter oh my god you're crazy ulti there from oh. mf can actually zone them out it's Whoa. enough for blake all the heal forced out but not it, enough. It did way more damage than I thought, actually. I thought it, it was definitely not going to... I mean, a lot we saw it before. Black Cleaver didn't get to be finished, but it will be finished this game. Oh, yeah. I I'm ready for legitimate it. damage misfortune as the tier 2 drops again, and the Rock Squad is back to the fountain. What do you guys think will be the next item for MF? For <laughs> Metal oh, Man. No, she hasn't. No, no. after Black Cleaver. Uh, after so Black we've got it now. Yeah, so I actually think that... I do it. No, well, I, I, personally, <laughs> I personally think that someone should, should get a locket. Like, okay. the fact that they don't have a locket, I think, is, is pretty bad. Does he have to build it? No, I think Lee Sanderson will could build it. Um, but I, I don't know what your feeling is on this. I think not having a, a locket against Orianna and a Zyra and an Echo is, like, pretty bad itemization yeah. for your team. I, I think you just can't control Pina. He's just going to build some damage and some tanky stuff. Well, someone's got to take the hit. Build yeah. an AD carry locket. Get in there, Prey. Because <laughs> someone should have a locket against three APs who are going to be doing a, a significant amount of damage, especially just like the ambient damage and stuff from Zyra as she starts to get more spell plan, I think. Mm -hmm. um, it can be a massive difference. Yeah, I, I agree with that. Uh, I think it's a little late too. It's like 32 minutes, yeah. so when Lucky gets finished, it, it should be Fairly. like 35 or you know, 37 minutes into the game. Oh, blank. Running with the ball. Oh, he caught the axe. Gonna try and start something here. Kuro Big gonna get all in that position. And that's enough damage. Actually, should be able to take him out instead. And oh, they Duke will. Gorilla, too. Kuro lives for a little while, but Duke dives in. Gorilla trying to cut out as best he can, but he lost the ult out. Gorilla doing huge amount of damage. And here comes Spray for cleanup. Whoop! Taking damage as Faker slays MF finally. But Pina in the other side of Smeb tries to dive in. 2v4 right now. Prey. Can he cut it out for a little longer? Pina's gonna bail. And he's just gonna fire away. Prey does a decent amount of damage. As there it is, wow. yeah, Pina cleans up, bang, but now it's 1v3. Blank looking in, does go down, and Prey is going to put the team on his back again. Pina revives from the GA, now they're going to turn it back in. Prey gets one there, takes up Baker, Duke going to go down as well, and Prey saves the day once again. It's the Rocks Tiger oh style on SK Telecom. That was like a 2v4. <laughs> that was <laughs> that was absurd. Holy moly. I actually can't believe that. And Prey flashed forward as an Ash into that fight, cleaning it up. Uh, and it kind of feels to me like... 
SKT either needed to fully bail out or fully commit to that. And they kind of waffled a bit back and forth, and it was a great start to the fight. I mean, Blank is essentially just able to run down Kuro and, and kill him off almost for free. Uh, but, you know, on the later half of this fight, Prey, Prey comes in, he's pretty much untouched, and a lot of SKT got chunked out, both by the Rumble ulti and by the MF ulti. And then, then here, I, I do really feel like SKT needed to all run and zone with the Faker's, Faker's Oriana Ball, or fully commit. Like, everyone go in on him at the same time. Because they're just strafing back and forth, there's lots of free autos going off, and then he's able to commit to it, and, and Faker still is not in position to kind of return damage there, right? Like, no one is in the right position. Yeah, it seems like just... A lot of scramble calls. Maybe they're really happy about the fight going well to the start, so yeah. they weren't so finished on like the tail end of it. Uh, yeah, this is just an insane play, honestly. Like, Pina even used his kick to like finish, like pretty much wasted it on Zyra because she was already dead. So all they really had was just like a Ash Flash and a tanky Lisa with no. Ult. It's crazy that they actually turned that whole fight around. I know, like, kind of a question about you know, how does the uh, MFLT with Black Cleaver Mortal Reminder do? Pretty good oh. amount of damage, actually. <laughs> I mean, with the Rumble ulti, that's kind of a cool AoE combo. So I like seeing that. I don't quite like the longsword oh, as much. Oh, they He has no flash, remember. Gotta keep failing. Blank wants it. He's not gonna get it. Well, actually, if... Yeah, if Blank, like, just ulted the Leeson kick... Exactly. That, that might have been a kill, actually. He needs to ult earlier, but that, that kick allowed him to peel, and now he doesn't have his ult. Yeah, Blank's caught. Could good equalizer. Trouble. Gonna try and jam them down, but SKT getting out. No, Kuro. Gonna wow. force them out with the AoE zone. Burn oh. needs to run. Does get out. That's a victor nerf right there. Yeah. <laughs> the storm is so slow if you're not around it. <laughs> but yeah, they barely scrape by. They might lose the tower here for... Actually, the wave. The wave is a little far. They're just going to set up for the Baron. Yep, up in 25 seconds. So smart stuff from Rocks. Always have the objectives in mind and will be plenty healthy with the triple ocean drakes they've accrued as well. Rocks certainly in position to push themselves to a serious point here if they take this game. We might see Ash win three games in the series already. <laughs> Bottom lane certainly look great here. For rocks and SKT, it's just been the struggle. You know, Bang's pretty big. Let's see if it's Caitlyn can show up in the late game team fights. But Wolf has had a rough two games in a row now. Yeah, well, Wolf has been very ineffective. But uh, I will say that SKT, even though they are behind it quite a bit of gold, if they can keep hanging around, uh, the gold starts to matter less and less pretty soon. Here, usually people talk about like the eighty thousand gold mark type thing, where where everyone's starting to get capped out. Uh, and, and Rox's players are getting kind of close to that point. Faker does have a lot of items. If he lands a Shockwave, it can turn around fights. And Rox is going to have to be careful because they don't have flashes right now on their on their carries. And if they got caught by Duke, by Faker, they can still get taken down. And even, even that top lane fight, right? That was very close to going SKT's way, if not for some incredible play from Prey specifically and some kind of miscommunication from SKT. Yeah, I think the name of the game is just to do what, what's been working for them fish all game. Arrows. Yeah, fish for arrows and, and like stay away from Duke and you can blank like the plague, you know. Just really keep your distance, and one of these arrows are gonna hit. You know, we trust prey. <laughs> and I like kind of what you said before, Gate, about it. It's like it's very fail, very safe way to well, try and approach up. there. They're doing the opposite. So. This is risky. I mean, prey doesn't have his flash still. Crow almost does. Wow. Great wow. calculation. Arrow hits. Someone. Ah, uh, unlucky. We hit, so his hit rate stays up. But now it's gets you actually in a good little flank kind of here. It's gets you have to be careful. But Duke's kind of zoning them away, and this is a dangerous spot to walk through, but they will do so, and they claim the Baron safely. Everyone's still alive. I'm, I'm pretty surprised that SKT wasn't in position to even try something there, and it looks like they're setting up for a bit of a desperation flank or something that they were trying to get, but uh, Rox is aware where they are, and they can just kind of shove in mid lane and, and make SKT take the long way home. Everyone's got their cooldowns, though. Rox going to shove down mid. Well, that's good, Garrett. Do they? Rox can run up top. This is so yeah. all in. <laughs> <laughs> so he's gonna actually zone them out. Duke taking damage. Rock's just gonna stand and try and kite them out of the way here. They're gonna lose everything for this. They might yeah. lose top tower too. There's no wave, but they get up for free too. Yeah, they wow. run out top. Wow. But that was so well managed by Rocks, and and that really just kind of stinks of desperation to me from SKT. Uh, they knew they shouldn't have given up the Baron. Then they do. They try to set up in the Wraith Brush, but they get spotted out. I think that was a Hawk shot, or maybe just they expected them to be there. But either way, so well done by Rocks. They get one free inhib. 
And now, massive wave here. They're pushing for two, and ooh, wow. and Faker again. Peanut wants it, he's gonna commit. He flashes for it, but Faker gonna ulti two back. Smeb taking damage as well, but Bang is burning down. This is done, he gets popped for Rumble Tower. is going to fall here, but Rocks maybe went a little too far forward. Peanut, though, Peanut revives really again. GA usage, very nice. Bang, forced to flash out and gets himself to safety, but the damage is almost done. Blank looks like he might go down. He barely lives through the victor damage, and Rocks ravaged through SKT's base. They're going for it, actually. And this is kind of risky because all Correct. of SKT are alive now. It's mm. kind of risky. That's just Rock's Tigers in a, <laughs> as a whole, man. <laughs> they want Bang. They look for it with it. the Proto about Duke trying to flank, but Prey is going to shoot him down. Duke might buy his team oh, some time, he's but he's going to die. Oh, no. <laughs> this could be the game, actually. That, that might have really just cost him the game. Maybe. He was, trying to, he was trying to cut the creep wave there, and he actually just got stuck in the minions and taken out. I mean, not too much he could have done, but it's very unfortunate. For Duke, certainly, as he does get caught and killed, and the GA is burnt as well. Oh, the hits on the blank, they're just gonna try and zerg him down. Not quite enough damage, but again, SKT are so low, they are fighting with almost no health. Trying to close out this game, and Roxy just That's slowly it. That's pushing it, yeah. forward. Peanut in again, wow. kicks someone in the face and takes out blank. Rox Tiger's up 2 1. What a game. <laughs> I think Woo! Another story of the bottom lane, though. This uh, MF Ash duo is just doing so much. Seriously. Prey just like hard carried that game. That was that was pretty incredible. He he was playing so so well, and even just at the end, you can see how frustrating it was to play against Gorilla. He was constantly zoning people out with the E. Like bang, anytime Bang was trying to move in and get some damage out, he'd immediately get E'd by MF. So you're slowed down. You're sta standing in this is AOE taking damage. Even just the threat of like Lee Sin hitting a Q on you or something when you're in that slow field is much higher. So you have to like just back off.